How can night owls best function in a society made for morning birds? <laughs> uh, can you change your chronotype or do us night owls just have to suffer? Okay, well, as a former night owl, um, I used to work long hours in the lab. Um, I still work long hours, but less in the lab. Just so happens that's the way the, the career goes. I put tinfoil on the windows, I would lock the doors, I'd blast the music, and I would stay there over the holidays until I had to go home just for the holiday events. And my clock would drift, so I became a night owl, and then it, my clock would flip and everyone was gone. Your mind gets really tweaked when you're not interacting with anybody. By the way, seeing faces in the morning and seeing faces at some point during the day, once you're ready to face the day, very important for mental health. This is something I wish more people knew about. It also, and here I'm not trying to evoke any kind of um, sentimentality, but it, you know, I, when you think about people who just are clearly not doing well, um, whether or not they have shelter or not, you know, it's how often do we actually make direct eye contact nowadays? It's not very often. Um, so eye contact is important, but I've also shifted to being a morning person. And so here's the thing. If you are a true night owl, that means that your circadian clock, meaning the genes that control the area of your brain and your hypothalamus that controls wake sleep cycles, is fundamentally different. Very unlikely you'll become a morning person without being a kind of angry morning person. So you can use that argument and you can cite me. However, as we get older, it is true that the amount of slow wave sleep to REM sleep tends to change and we can do better on shorter bouts of sleep, mostly because we're getting less rapid eye movement sleep. And even if we try, we can't. Those people would probably be better off sticking to a limited amount of sleep at night and then getting a short nap. The rule with naps is nap if you want to, don't if you don't want, but not if it interferes with your nighttime sleep. And if you can't nap, do some sort of non-sleep deep rest or NSDR as I refer to it, non-sleep deep rest. So you can probably shift your clock by anywhere from two to eight hours. And that's true for jet lag as well. Light is going to be the best way, but if you really want to shift, you're going to have to stack the big three or four. Light, so get light when you want to be awake. Temperature, you have to increase your body temperature to wake up. You have to decrease body temperature to go to sleep. Keep in mind, if you get into an ice bath or cold shower, you get very, very cold. But then what happens? It's like putting an ice pack on the thermostat. Your body temperature goes up. Remember, thermogenesis, that's the warming of the body in response to cold. Of course, if you stay in a long time, you'll, you'll get crispy cold. You turn to a popsicle. But the idea is that if you take a cold shower and you get some bright light and you get some exercise and you drink some caffeine, you can train your system to expect that at a certain time of day. And you'll want to go to sleep a little bit earlier or much earlier. And you'll want to wake up when you stack those things. But that also means not taking caffeine and cold showers and doing exercise late at night. So it's going to take some work. But those are the, the big four. It's going to be light is the most powerful way to shift. More light awake, less light asleep. Temperature increase awake, temperature decrease asleep. Right? Food is the other one. Eating, you can force yourself to eat breakfast even if you're not a breakfast eater. Um, this works when you travel too. Just get onto the local meal schedule because you have a clock system in your gut, believe it or not. You want to synchronize that with your brain and then activity, getting some sort of exercise. But it takes a little bit of work, but you can do it. You can definitely do it.